And Lord, we pray that uh, in this moment we we gather all of this anticipation and all of this excitement that we feel uh, for us uh, having the ability to celebrate your birth, Jesus. And Lord, it is on this day that we celebrate the, the beauty of your love for us. And Lord, I just pray that um, this is Christmas season. Uh, we align our hearts to yours. Lord, I pray that in this moment and in this time, uh, let, this, uh, let this moment just shape the rest of our lives. And whether it be us discovering God's love for the first time or us rediscovering God's love or, or us having a rekindling of, of that love uh, that we have experienced in you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray that this moment shapes our lives forever and ever and ever to all and to, be, and to eternity. Thank you for my friends here. I thank you uh, that you have brought us all together for some reason, and that is to worship you. And so, Lord, as uh, we hear from your word and as, as I speak your truth, Lord, I just pray that you just be with me and be with us. And uh, Holy Spirit, do your thing. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys may be seated. It's so good to see so many of you. I, I, I've noticed a, a couple new faces, and I've seen a couple uh, faces that I haven't seen in a while. So uh, it's just such a exciting time. What I love about uh, services like this is that oftentimes it's a little chaotic, and you've heard me say this before, but what the beauty of, of worship is that sometimes we can experience some of this chaos that we all experience uh, Monday through Saturday, right, where especially during this time where we're kind of in the hustle and bustle trying to figure out what to buy, who, and, and where are we going to find the time to do all the things that, that we need to do, and how do we live a life that is present and focused on, on the reason for the season, and, and this uh, morning was a, a great example of us living into that chaos, right? And isn't it amazing how God can just make something beautiful out of something just a little tiny chaotic? Um, I'm super thankful for that. And then also, I, I want to uh, say thank you again for all of you who participated or prayed or um, just encouraged us to partner with Holland Language Academy. One of my favorite things about this project is uh, was that this was a, a vision or a dream that came from you guys. This was not something that came from us. And so I just want to applaud you guys into doing that and doing it really well. Every single um, teacher and even supporting staff got some type of support. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Today, though, today is the day. It's our first Christmas that we get to celebrate together as a church. That's a huge wow. thing. Can you guys applaud that? Exciting thing. I can't even begin to tell you how exciting I am. I remember last Christmas, I remember looking at Hannah and saying, hey, this Christmas, our next Christmas isn't going to be as, you know, kind of calm and, and collected as it was, and, and I wouldn't have it any other way, we wouldn't have it any other way, and it's just so exciting that we get to celebrate Christmas with some of our, our closest and newest friends. Uh, but today, what I really want to talk about is the moment that changed everything. This is the sermon title if you're taking notes. The moment that changed everything. And I believe that the moment that Jesus came down on earth and was born was the moment that changed everything. Yeah. Our life is, is filled with moments, right? Every 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 winking se second that we live, it, it's a moment that goes by. And, and some moments are, are big and some moments shape our lives for forever. And, and some moments just aren't, you know that impactful in our lives, and whether it's moments like we're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook and we realize that we've scrolled through probably a second or third time and we're just seeing content that we've already seen, obviously those moments aren't that impactful in our lives, but then there are some moments that are hugely impacting in our lives. A moment that impacted my life pretty significantly was last week. Uh, I was uh, just kind of sitting down, and it was a Saturday, so I just finished sermon prepping and all this other stuff, and I, I realized that it was nice, and it's December, and when we have a nice day in September, I tried to get outside and do something active, and so I decided that I would go on for a run. Now, because we have a child, I don't have a ton of time, you know, just to kind of do things like that, and so I quickly ran downstairs, put on my shoes, and just 
grabbed our dog and went outside. I, I didn't stretch. I was like, oh, no, I'll be fine. It's just two miles. Not that big of a deal, right? Uh, so I, I made it a mile, and I was feeling really good, but my back was a little tight, and I was just kind of like, I'm just going to push through and finish, right? Because it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Can I get an amen? <laughs> About a mile and a quarter into it, I took a stride, and in that stride, I literally could, I, I just stood like this, and I couldn't move, and uh, I had this huge back um, cramp, and it was just not good at all. We were a couple blocks away from our house, and it was so bad that I had to call Hannah to come pick me up. Just a couple blocks. Can you imagine how awesome I felt in that moment? <laughs> this moment shaped my life for a little bit. It, it let me know how, how uh, young I am, and it let me know how, how agile I think I still am. Uh, but it was a moment that shaped my life pretty significantly for because for a few days after that, I, I laid in bed and, and I had to go to the doctors and I had to take medicine and all these other things. But it was a moment that shaped my life, but it didn't have a long-lasting impact on my life. You know, we all have moments like that where it shapes our lives pretty significantly in that moment, but, you know, kind of the, the impact fades away after a couple days or maybe even a couple weeks. But we all have moments that impact our lives pretty significantly, and in those moments, we, we, we feel like they are going to just shatter our whole life and, and change the complete trajectory in which we feel like we are going in life. Those moments where we have been praying and hoping and wishing and having conversations about and just standing at the edge of our seats wondering if what we are wanting and wondering if what we are praying for is in line with God's will in our lives and in, in, in line with God's will in our community and only to find out that the things that we've been hoping for, the things that we were wishing for, the things that we were just hoped and believed that God was going to do in that moment when we find out that that's actually not what, we're, what God is going to do. It's in those moments that we feel like our life is completely shattered. These moments also have a deep impact in our life. Maybe in that moment we feel like there's no way that we could ever move beyond those moments. And if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes the holiday season isn't always filled with joy and isn't always filled with hope. Many of us struggle with those moments that impact our lives somewhat negatively. But also, some of us also have some really amazing moments in our life where there, there are moments where, where the things that we have been hoping for and praying for and the things that we believed God was going to answer our prayers happen and, and they change our life drastically because we're able to sit back and, and realize that with a heart of gratitude and through that lens of Jesus Christ being born, all things in that idea, we have a sense of peace and we have a sense of hope. Regardless of the moments in which they shape our lives negatively or positively. The moments that changed our life significantly are the moments that have the most longing effect in our lives. And today, what I want to think about today is the moment that Jesus was born and how it changed the whole world forever and ever into eternity. So if you have your Bibles, I'd ask you to open them up to Luke 2. Luke 2. Use your phone for your Bible. That's okay. The Boulevard is a tech-friendly church. Nobody's going to look at you and judge you. Maybe some people will, but I'm just going to pray for them right now. I'm just kidding. But you should pray for them. That's <laughs> Luke 2. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, uh, you can look up on the screen and follow along with us. The moment that changed everything. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taking, taken while Canarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The moment that changed everything. 
doesn't seem like a moment that changed everything, right? When we read it like that. I think Luke is a, a fascinating uh, author of, of the gospel because Luke is a, is a, is a physician. He, he approaches his um, authorship, he approaches his writing of the gospels and of the account of Jesus uh, in a very kind of, I don't know, process way. He, he appreciates details and so and he names all of the cities. It's kind of like, okay, uh, Luke, we get it. You, you are a detail-oriented person, and they went really far. They went from Nazareth to Bethlehem. We get it. But, but there is so much richness in this story. And one of the things that we talk about often at the boulevard is that when we read a text and we read a passage from the, the, the scripture, we should also uh, understand what's happening in the background and what's happening around the text. Uh, and so the moment that changed everything... Uh, Mary uh, was just kind of an unordinary person. What's fascinating, though, is that all of the Old Testament was pointing to Mary and by way of pointing to Jesus. You see, all of the Old Testament was this anticipating of the coming Messiah, it was anticipating the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings coming to save all of humanity. But time and time again, when they looked to the rulers, when they looked to the leaders, when they looked to the kings, when they looked to the people who they thought they were the Messiah, the, the, these people just continued to drop the ball time and time again. And all of a sudden, we see an angel coming to an unlikely person in Mary. The angel tells Mary that she would soon become pregnant by the Holy Spirit and give birth to the Messiah. Now, what's fascinating, and if you've been at the boulevard for a little bit, you have caught a theme that God really likes to use unlikely people to do unlikely things for the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? amen. God likes to use unlikely people to do unlikely things for the kingdom of God. And, and this is another example of God using unlikely people to do unlikely things because we see the angel coming to Mary and telling Mary that you would soon give birth to the Messiah. Now, there was an issue here because Mary was not married. Mary was engaged to Joseph, another unlikely person. You see, Mary not only wasn't married, but in this time, uh, according to Jewish law, if you became pregnant and you were not married, you would be shunned or, or considered uh, kind of uh, unclean. And so it, and not only was Mary suffering with this idea that she would give birth to the Messiah, whom uh, she had never did the things to have, you know, you know, a baby and all those other things, uh, but uh, she was also going to be shunned from her community. One can only imagine how Mary would have felt in that moment. Not only was she going to give birth to the Messiah, but she was also struggling with the fact that the thing that God was calling her to do it was God was necessary, kind of like calling her to live in isolation for being and doing what God has called her to do. And so Mary and Joseph uh, understand that the king is calling them to do something like a census, right? Uh, and so Joseph uh, gathers um, their things and, and they go on foot from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. Now Bethlehem is an important piece of the scripture because Bethlehem is an important city as it fulfills a prophecy. You understand that David um, in the Old Testament, he was a king, he was a great king, uh, but he was also somebody who stumbled. Uh, David and, and Jesus were, and the Messiah were to be having, having a familiar, uh, familiarities. They were to be in the same lineage as it was uh, to fulfill the prophecy in the Old Testament. And so by them going to, to Bethlehem was this understanding that they were going to fulfill this prophecy. And as they were making their way on foot, and one can only imagine how, how swollen Mary's feet could have been after all of those miles that they journeyed, they get to this place that I like to think of as kind of like a DMV. Nobody likes going to the DMV. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> I got a couple loud amens. That was good. I'm going to have to keep that up. Um, I have this picture of Mary and Joseph going to this DMV to register their names, and they're registering their names so that they can pay taxes with money that they don't necessarily have. They pay, uh, they, they, they register their names at this DMV, and I'm sure they're, they're staying in a long line, and I'm sure they're having just a grand old time, and as they register their names, they turn around to make their way back home to Nazareth, but all of a sudden, I'm sure Mary's water broke. And in that moment, it was like quick. 
let's find the nearest hotel, or let's find the nearest hospital, or let's find the nearest, cleanest place that we can have our child. You think that if God would uh, uh, birth, or if, if, if Mary was going to birth the Messiah, God's own son, that they would definitely at least find a doctor or two, or midwives or nurses or something. Uh, but another interesting thing is they didn't find an inn because scripture says that the inn was too packed, it was too busy, there wasn't a space, there wasn't a bed for them. And so they made their way to a cave. A cave. Of all things, a cave. A cave where I'm sure smelled a lot like animal poop. A cave that was dingy. A cave that was dark. A cave that was, I'm sure, cold. And it was in this cave that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords would meet us, would be born. The moment that changed everything. Friends, I would like to think about today three reasons why this one moment, the moment that Jesus was born in a cave, changed everything. Not only thousands of years ago, but today and for all of eternity. The moment that changed everything. The first reason why this moment changed everything was it was the moment that God came down to earth. It was the moment that God came down to earth. This is very Jurassic. This is definitely a moment that changes everything because if you understand religion and if you understand uh, different gods and if you understand the way different um, people practice their religion or their faith, that other people have this idea of their deity or their God being very separated from the people. The Christianity, what separates us is, is this reality that, that God isn't necessarily concerned about separating us, although God is definitely separated from us as he is the most holy of holies. Uh, it's this idea that God longed to be in intimate relationship with us and so that he came down on earth to be among us, to dwell among us. You see, God, although was fully, uh, fully God, also became fully human. Jesus, as a baby, cried. Jesus, as a baby, I'm sure had trouble sleeping at times and, and kept Mary up and, and Joseph up at times. Jesus, I'm sure, had a couple wet and dirty diapers. Jesus was human. This is so important for us to understand because we understand that in Jesus' humanness, Jesus, and God longed to be in intimate relationship with us so much that he would send his one and only son to dwell amongst his people. Now, it's so easy to just pass by and, oh yes, God is human, and, and oh yes, uh, God is human through Jesus, but, but this is actually something that changes everything because it is in the moment that Jesus becomes human, God creates this intimate relationship with us. The thing that, that uh, the Old Testament uh, writers and the thing that, that people in, that lived in the Old Testament times all longed for was this intimate relationship with them. And in this moment, when God became human, we were able to be in union with him and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. The second reason why this moment changes everything is because... God wants an intimate relationship with us. I, uh, I, I get to have coffee and, and meals with so many of you, and it's part of what I love about being a pastor and your pastor is I get to get to know you so well and you get to know me. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I was hanging out with a friend who um, is rediscovering his faith. And in this rediscovering of his faith, he has a lot of really good questions. And one of the reasons why I love uh, meeting with you all is I get to learn from you, actually, and, and get to ask some of these questions with you. And, and one of the things I appreciate about our faith is there always isn't a formula, right? I wish there was formulas at times where we could have patented answers or, or we could just have really quick ways for us to answer things, but there always isn't things, and sometimes we need to wrestle. And so I was wrestling, not physically, but, you know, kind of verbally with my friend, and we were just talking about how God often seems distant. In the times and in the moments that, that we desperately need to hear a word from the Lord, 
or in the times where we desperately need to feel God's loving arms wrapped around us so tight, God always isn't there if we're honest with ourselves, or at least God doesn't feel like he's there. The beauty of this moment, the moment that Jesus was born, the beauty of the reality that it changed everything is that it allowed us to have this intimate relationship with him and allowed us access, complete access, full access to him 24-7. It was the time and the moment that we didn't need a, a special holy friend or a holy pastor or a holy priest to get us connected with God. It, it was a time where we didn't necessarily need to be in a church to feel God's presence. We can feel God's presence and hear him at all times. And yes, it, it takes some time to learn how to do that, and it takes some time and discipline to get into your word and, and to learn how to pray. But this was the moment that changed everything because it gave us complete and full access to Jesus, and it allowed us to have this intimate relationship with him. It's in this moment that Jesus came down on earth, left heaven, left everything that was normal to him, left everything that was comfortable to him, came down as a baby to be born in a cave. It was in this moment that Jesus reaches out to us and invites us into this intimate relationship with him. There would be no death and resurrection without Jesus' birth, which is why this moment changes everything. This moment changes everything. We see often in, in the Old Testament and in, even in some parts in the New Testament where, where people are, are striving to be in this intimate relationship with God. And so they do all of these things so that they can try to please God or, or, or go up to the mountain where they can meet God or, or go to the tabernacle where they can have this interaction with God. And all along where, where today we get to have the privilege of having this full access of knowing that through God's Birth in Jesus, through Jesus' birth, we have full access of getting to know him. Which leads us to our third point of why this moment changed everything. It changes everything because salvation came to the world. Salvation came to the world in this moment. It allowed us to have this reality that through Jesus' birth, we have the hope and peace that we all have been longing for. This sermon series has been a sermon series of, uh, it's been a difficult sermon series, if I'm honest with you. There's been some Sundays where I have left the stage or other people have left the stage, and, and I have felt like there weren't necessarily answers to the questions that we're asking, but we knew that God was with us in the middle of us asking the questions. And, and I, I still want to believe, and I still believe, that God is with us in the midst of us wrestling with God and us asking the questions. But, but through this process of hope, we come to this day that we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And it is this moment that changes everything. Because it is at this moment, the process becomes to its completion. It climaxes because we get to celebrate the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is in this moment... That salvation comes to the world. Now friends, the earth moans. The earth waits for, for all of us to experience this full salvation that we once will, will feel once Jesus comes again. But in this moment, friends, let us, let us enjoy the climax of the beauty of Jesus' birth. Let us find the hope that we all have been longing for because when we, when we look at the process of life and when we look at the struggles and we look at the joys all through the lens of Jesus, Jesus being born, we realize that things all through the eyes of Jesus become secondary. Because Jesus desires an intimate relationship with us and if we have this full access to God, what is our response? What is our response? The moment that changed everything. There are many of you here who, who have been walking with the Lord for, for longer than I've been alive. There are many of you here who, who have just discovered your faith. And the beauty of our faith is, is many times we are asking 
the same questions. We grow in our maturity, yes. We, we grow in our uh, likeness of, of Jesus Christ, and we grow in our ability to, to produce fruit, uh, to bring the kingdom of God. To, we grow in our ability to disciple, but, but many times we are asking the same question. God, how can I love you more? And how can I experience your love at all times? And in all places. The beauty of this moment changing everything is that day after day, moment after moment, we have the privilege of submitting our lives to Jesus time and time again. Friends, in this moment, I wonder if us as a community can submit our lives to Jesus. I wonder that in this moment, if, if we can all be honest with ourselves and, 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 and realize that sometimes life is, is difficult. But because of this moment, because this moment changed everything, we have the privilege and honor to having an intimate relationship with Jesus. The intimate relationship that Jesus continually calls us to time and time again. But it's so easy in this season to be distracted. It's hard to watch TV or, or, or go on social media or, or go to restaurants and, and not see the distractions, the ads, the things that distract us and, and helping us maybe feel like we have the salvation that we've been longing for to, that makes us think that we have the peace or makes us think that we have the wholeness that we have. But Black Friday was, was quite a while ago. And if you're like me, and if you bought something that made you maybe feel somewhat more whole, that has faded. The beauty of this moment changing everything is that through Jesus' birth, we are able to come to God time and time again, desiring a more intimate, more deep relationship with Him. And this is why we come to the table week after week after week after week. We come to this table because we have realized that there are times where, where we drop the ball. There are times where we have said that the intimacy that God longs for, for us, from us, that's not always reciprocated. There are times where we aren't necessarily the most disciplined with our times. The times that we could be reading scripture or praying or, or loving our neighbor. We just decide to love ourselves and do what feels good. But the beauty of this moment, the beauty of this moment changing everything for eternity <coughs> means that it can change everything for today means that Jesus can literally change everything today for you and for us and for our kingdom. Because this is what we celebrate here at this table. We celebrate the love that God has for us. We celebrate the love that God has for us by sending his one and only son down on earth for us, for you, and for me. In this bread, there is, there is love. In this bread, there is joy. In this bread, there is hope. And guess what? It's, it's, it's your call to, to get up and, and come and receive this. But Jesus is right here waiting for you. Jesus wants to give you this grace and this love and this mercy. Well, this moment right here and right now. Change your whole life forever. Now, I'm not saying, you know, if, if, if you don't know Jesus, yes, I hope that this moment changes your life, but also if you do know Jesus, I pray that you come to this table knowing that this moment can also change your life. This is the beauty of our faith, that time and time again, we grow more and more and more in our love and our intimacy with Jesus. The night 
that Jesus was betrayed a few years after he was born. He took a loaf of bread and he was with his friends and he, and he broke it. Because that is who you are and that is what you offer. 